you've always been able to lose weight. I, why are you making this claim? It was never impossible for you to not lose weight. You saying that, making it seem like, oh, you're a bad person for not losing weight. It's always been an option for you. Why are you looking at weight loss as never been an option until now? You're like 34 years old. You are an adult. You could have lost weight at any point in time. If you feel bad now for not losing weight, what happened to like the last 10, 15 years of your life? You're a grown woman. And you're literally saying that this person is making you not go to the doctor. Dude, if you if you are on the internet and this makes you so upset that you're telling this person that you don't feel like you should be able to go to the doctor anymore, don't go on the internet. You you don't have the ability to survive on the internet. I honestly believe that I, it's, probably, it's probably inconceivable for you to even go outside given the fact that people might say something bad to you out there too. So the video that this comment is on has been getting a bunch of traction this morning. Not sure why it's picking up again. But like, you do realize that what you said is completely contradictory, right? Because you're very much saying like, I'm all for fat acceptance, but like, do you have to be fat though? I think that there's some truth in that though. I mean, let's go back and look at the comment. All I'm saying is, we can have fat acceptance while recognizing that it can cause issues. I'm fat. This video isn't a problem. I don't see a, I don't see an issue with this at all. I mean, I think we should be recognizing the problem in the same way that, for instance, when you buy a car, you're, you're obviously thinking about the repercussions of buying a car, right? You're going to assume, okay, uh, let me just make sure this car has everything I need and just to make sure it's really good and in case I get into a crash. Obviously, you don't want to get into a crash, but... Ultimately, you want the car to be safe enough to where if you do, if you are in a crash, you have that in the back pocket. You have a safer car. Everybody is going to consider these things when they buy things, okay? Or just exist in the world, right? Like when you go outside, you're thinking in the back of your mind, I really hope I don't get robbed. I really hope that nothing bad happens to me today, but you're going to still do it because guess what? You're a person, you're somebody that's responsible, and you're looking at the world through the realm of Things could happen, and that's okay. In the same way that this person is, right? You can have fat acceptance, which is completely fine, okay? You can you can totally rep fat acceptance, but can we just stop being ignorant about fat acceptance and acknowledge the, the risks of being overweight or obese, which there are numerous amounts of risks, tons and tons of problems with being fat. That's all we're saying. Just acknowledge the defects, right? You guys can still have your sloppy, disgusting organization, your fat acceptance organization. That's fine, but... Can we at least say there's some problems that come with being overweight? Is that like so ridiculous to say? Why are you people so unreasonable to deny basic human being functions of being overweight? You guys literally are already here always complaining about this stuff. Oh, I can't walk upstairs. The elevators are out of out of service. I can't, I literally can't even use the toilet because my butt cheeks are so big that I can't poop properly anymore. You can say all that stuff and yet you refuse to acknowledge the defects of being fat. It's just interesting to me. But like, you do realize that what you said is completely contradictory. It's not right? contradictory, bro. To, okay, maybe it is for the fat acceptance. Right. Because you're very much saying like, I'm all for fat acceptance, but like, do you have to be fat though? It's like when somebody says, I think, like if somebody was pro-choice, right? Like pro-abortion, but they believe that you should have the right not to be. It's like that. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that you should be able to do whatever you want, but I believe this. You get what I'm saying? It's like that. You you get me? That's what we're saying, dude. I, I don't know how you can't understand that. And as you can see by the crazy amount of medical studies that I have discussed here on my page, <laughs> there is so much evidence out there now that poor healthcare outcomes for fat people actually come from weight stigma. Lack of equitable uh, medical care, uh, uh, patients being stigmatized by their healthcare providers. It's everything but the weight. I don't know why these people, like, can we, like, acknowledge that the least common denominator, the thing that ties all those things together, is the weight? Can we at least acknowledge that? Like, you're not going to have a doctor that's going to be biased against fat people if they're thin, okay? Can we talk about that? No? Can't talk about that? Weight stigma? You're not going to have weight stigma if you're not fat. Like, all these things are linked to being fat. And I'm not saying, definitely not saying, that if you're fat, you're not dealing with this stuff. Sure, when you go to the doctor and you are overweight or obese, the doctor is most definitely, I don't even understand why this is even a big, uh, this is like a crazy idea to say, but when you're fatter, obviously the doctor is gonna have some issues and they're gonna say some things about your weight. If they didn't, they wouldn't be doing their job. Like you go into a mechanic and your wheel is hanging off and the mechanic goes, <laughs> you're good, you're totally fine. You could totally leave the shop right now, you're fine. No, obviously not, right? You're gonna have to get that shit adjusted. You want your doctor to tell you about the things that you have problems with. Don't 
you? No, you don't. Okay. And look, weight cycling, again, you wouldn't have these problems if you weren't fat to begin with. Why don't you just like get a grasp on your own life? Take responsibility for yourself. You're an adult. You're a grown woman, all right? I hope that you are. Maybe not mentally, but you're a grown woman. You should have the ability to comprehend things and in take them in. And then once you take them in, you realize, okay, I have full control of my life, at least like in the, in the very basic sense, and you can control what you eat. That's just what we're saying, okay? That's all we're saying, man. So therefore, they never seek treatment. Therefore, they're also not getting their- I hate this like argument of like, oh, if I go to the doctor, the doctor's gonna tell me tell me I'm fat, therefore I don't go to the doctor because I'm afraid the doctor's gonna tell me I'm fat. Dude, like, it, it, this is just like a terrible way to do anything in life. It's like the meme of that guy sitting in the chair and the house is on fire and he's just going, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's like refusing to look at anything other than what you wanna see. It's a terrible way to live your life because ultimately, even though I know that you want this, like you don't want to, you don't want to see everything that's affecting you. You don't. I, I get it. Your house is falling apart. It's burning down this and that, but you're focused on this one point. You've got tunnel vision on this one point and that's all you're going to see. And you can live your like you can live your life like that for a long period of time. But eventually, that shit's going to catch up to you, bro. You can't go a, a significant amount of time looking down this like, this tunnel vision and seeing everything else destroying around you, becoming dilapidated and eventually never have to deal with that shit. It's gonna, it's piling up. You understand? So what, wouldn't it be better to ad address the problem now and then event, like get it under control so that way you don't have to ultimately deal with it later on? Cut your losses as much as you can so that way you can improve your life as much as you can instead of just like preaching the good word of being fat acceptance and then demonizing people that think there's actual problems with being fat, which there is. And instead of, <laughs> instead of acknowledging the problems with being fat, Okay, like the physical problems, you instead want to focus on the social issues of people looking at you and going, ew, fat person. You want to you want to focus on that the most instead of actually looking at the problems traditionally associated with being fat in the sense of like health statuses. It's it's interesting. It's real interesting how these people think I, you can see the amount of projection these people are like claiming they're spitting out of their mouth on a daily basis because they refuse to acknowledge the truths that they have and they, they instead want to focus on things that are completely irrelevant. Preventive exams. Therefore, they're not being preventatively treated for a disease that they could develop. So it's my fault that you didn't go to the doctor? Why should anybody feel like it's their fault? Dude, if you refuse, if you're sitting here and you have an issue and you have an, a problem and you as an individual, you as a free autonomous human being, decide you don't want to go to the doctor or you don't want to get that fixed and then you then you blame that on someone else that's what am i supposed to do with that huh like why should i ever why should i feel bad for you i don't i don't because if you do not do it why should i have to unless you're a child unless you're an old person that literally can't then I don't feel bad. You're a grown woman. You have the ability to post this video in the same way that you have the ability to get in your car and drive to the clinic down the street and get your shit checked up on. Why should I have to feel bad because you have an illness and you not going to the doctor, which is your, you decided to do that and I have to feel bad because you didn't decide to do that. What the fuck is wrong with you? What, what kind of shit is that? That's like somebody taking their money and throwing it throwing it off the like the Empire State Building and looking at you and going, you fucking disgusting, horrible person. You just let me do that? You just let me take my own money and let me do whatever I wanted to do because I'm, a, I'm my own person. You let me do that, you disgusting, horrible, awful person. That's what you're doing right now. Do you see how dumb that is? You're making your own decisions and you're literally taking the decisions that have negative consequences and instead of taking those negative consequences and internalizing them and making sure that you don't make those decisions again, you're instead seeding those decisions that you made yourself and you're putting that on somebody else who may or may not even exist. You're just putting it on society, society, which is like everybody. It's not even like a, re it's not even a person. So yeah, whatever, dude, whatever, man. We are not allowed to be in clinical research studies most of the time. Fatness is like an outlier. We're not allowed to dedicate our bodies to science after we're dead because they don't want fat cadavers. It's just harder, man. It's just, man, it's like this with, you guys complain about things that are just so crazy, man. Do you know how hard it is to operate on really, really obese people? Do you know that it's probably more work to do, like, cut into a really, really old, like, a really, really fat person compared to somebody that's not so fat? I don't know why this is such a crazy idea. I can't even believe they're complaining about that. Like, oh, I can't donate my body to science when I die. Okay, the fuck? <laughs> oh, some people don't even want to do that to begin with. Doctors only get, like, 
a few hours of nutritional training, but they want to educate people on like how to not be fat. What is up with these people, man? I cannot believe that. So the few hours of nutritional training that really, okay. So even if they did get only a few hours of nutritional training, are you working under the assumption that nutritional training is some kind of like nuanced study that it's like, it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like in the ether. Like you have to go to like Ra's al Ghul himself, like the guy that trained Batman in order to discover the, the hidden intricacies of how to gain and lose weight. You do realize that we know how this shit works, right? It is calories in, calories out fundamentally. If you eat too many calories, you gain weight. And if you eat less calories than what you need, you lose weight. That's what it's all about. And sure... I would agree that a lot of people, and especially in public schools, I really think they should probably be informing people as much as they possibly can on nutrition since you're going to be eating for your entire life, right? That's like the number one thing that you're going to do. You're going to be eating. And we obviously have a problem here in America with the overconsumption of a lot of high calorie foods. So it would most definitely be super, super, super amazing if we could teach children and adults that food is not something that you just gorge on, but it should be something that you enjoy, but in moderation. It shouldn't be something that you just eat all the time and you don't give a fuck about yourself. Too much of a good thing, okay? It's a bad thing. You understand? Anyway, something in my eye. It's like a piece of hair. There's so many issues <laughs> that are systemic that have it's nothing always. to do with just being fat. It's always systemic issues. It's never I can take... There's always going to be systemic problems. And the way that these people think about systemic issues is just so incredibly boring, man. Because if you're just sitting here blaming issues on everything, at, like never, never on yourself, I don't care. I just really don't care because the way you're looking at systemic problems is just so crazy to me. If you're considering that we have too many stairs in society as a systemic issue, you have a fucked up way of thinking about the world. If you're considering elevator access or like not being able to find a job that requires you to stand up for eight hours a day as a systemic issue, you're just, you have a, that's a mental problem, dude. You have to go somewhere and find out how the real world works because that is ridiculous. Would you consider that like, <laughs> would you consider like let's say for instance in the 19th century where most people that were alive were farmers would you consider that to be like systemic fat phobia because most people had to literally work all day and all night to put food on their family do you understand that like is that a systemic problem no yes how does it work exactly it's such a dumb way of thinking you're literally considering the laws of our universe as Fat phobia. Do you understand how dumb that shit is? And it's not the same as saying like systemic racism because there's some systemic racism. We have examples of those things, right? Like for instance, redlining or if you go back, you know, actual slavery, Jim Crow. Yes, those were systemic issues written in the law books that said things that were racist. And even nowadays we have some systemic problems, right? Systemic issues that are not directly written to the law. We hate black people, therefore oppress them. Those are not there. I'm not one of these people that just sits there and goes systemic problems are the direct quotes of black people are ew gross oppress them i'm one of these people that are obviously going to look at things and go if a law is specifically targeting a particular group of demographic or an area that has a higher percentage of a certain race and those people are 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 disadvantaged in a tremendous way compared to other groups then i would consider that a systemic issue i would it's not, it doesn't always have to be systemic issue has to be like the direct quote of black people ew it could be something that indirectly affects black people or even other groups of people in a negative way you understand so there's that and then there's what you're saying which is like stairs which is systemic issue uh sure i mean sure if that's what you want to say it but it's such a terrible disgusting way of ever approaching like if you do that Okay, if you're going to say that systemic issues are like stairs or like doctors or like not being able to find jobs because you're so fat, you do understand that like the way you're thinking about this is so incredibly outside the boundaries of how anyone thinks about this that you're going to lose like 99% of people, which is one of the reasons why fat acceptance is like fucking crazy. Like you guys literally annex so many people because the way you think about shit doesn't make sense to 99.9% .9 of people. And the fact that I had to go on that like giant explanation to even find out how you were defining systemic issue is dumb. Like it's crazy that I even know how to fucking, how I think it's crazy that I know how to define their issues better than them. Is that inflammation can just be extra fat deposits. I think if you lost weight, a diet plan, take a diet. That paralysis really could be from just excess weight. What about Ozem? This video is so spot on and I would like to get into some medical research to talk about the problem in the healthcare field with weight stigma. 
So this first one is from 2015, The Impact of Weight Bias and Stigma on Quality of Care and Outcomes. This is a chart that they have within the study, and I think it's very applicable. But they concluded some things from the study. First off, the primary care provider was less engaged in communication with patients that they think are not going to be adherent to whatever advice they give them. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. If you know somebody is not going to do whatever you're telling them to do, there's no point of even talking to them about it. And I've come to that realization a few different times in my life where you can tell somebody to the end of the day, like, hey, dude, you said something to me and you did something that was incredibly disrespectful to me. And I think that probably should be adjusted. Otherwise, I don't think we could be friends. And these people, a lot of times, won't even register it as a problem. What do you mean it's a problem? What are you talking about? How is that a problem? I don't think it's a problem. What are you talking about? Or if you go to somebody and go, hey, dude, that drug addiction that you have is a problem. It's a, it's a real issue. And they don't consider it a, an issue. It is what it is. You can't do anything. You can't tell these people that they're wrong because ultimately they'll never believe that they're wrong. Or they just don't care to be wrong or right. They're just people that are just going to do whatever the fuck they want. And sometimes I look at this and I go... If you're going to the doctor and your doctor is telling you, hey, dude, um, you have these issues and these issues are really, really bad. And in order to alleviate these issues, you're going to have to do something that you don't want to do. And your response is, no, I'm going to continue to do what I want to do. Why are you even here then? Why did you show up if ultimately you weren't even going to take the advice to begin with? Like, what are you doing here? Right? There's no point. And it's really hard sometimes when you hear somebody or you see somebody saying something that's so incredibly incorrect, something that just not just doesn't make sense. And you have the information, you have it, and you can perfectly articulate to them why they're wrong. And even when you do that, they still don't know why they're wrong or they still think they're right. There's nothing you could do about it. At that point, you just walk away. You can't associate with those people because there are some people that just never will, never will ever um take advice and it's terrible and obviously that's based off of the stereotype that fat people are lazy undisciplined weak-willed etc most of the time that's true though uh when you're obese it's not that i think you're lazy because i know a lot of fat people that would tell me and i've seen it myself that are not traditionally lazy in the sense of like they're obviously doing a lot throughout the day they're running around they're picking up things they're doing chores they're working all that stuff is great nobody's saying that fat people are inherently lazy in that particular sense we're saying most of the time when you're lazy we're talking about I cannot believe that you would put yourself in a circumstance where you are so incredibly unhealthy and still refuse to do nothing about it. That is lazy. Why would you not do it? You know, that's what we're saying most of the time. Okay. Weak willed too. I hear this constantly. It's either one of two things. It's either you think weight loss is never going to work. It's not sustainable or it just doesn't exist. Or you have tried weight loss in the past and you did something so incredibly extreme, like fasting for 19 days and going to the gym for five hours a day for like two months and realize that it's unsustainable. And then you decided to never do it again. It's one of those two things. And both of those scenarios are crazy, obviously. So that's what we're saying, all right? Like it's one of those two things and you guys have different understandings on how weight loss should be. Primary care providers reported to have less respect for patients who were plus size. They typically spend less time with their larger patients. In fact, they were- You know what's interesting is like, I, 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 I do wanna be respected, I do, but- um, this is obviously like my personal, this is my anecdotal evidence, okay? When you're talking to somebody and they are not taking the information that you're telling them and you know you're right, what the fuck? Of course, I'm going to be disrespectful in the sense of like, well, like, what do you want me to do, right? Like, if I'm telling you this is how you get better and you go, yeah, but this got, you know, this got to be something else. No, there's nothing else. This is what you got to do. This is how you do it. And you go, ah, I don't know about that. What the fuck am I supposed to do at that point, right? And also... Sometimes I don't really even care if that person is being nice to me or not. I just want them to get the job done, right? I would appreciate if they were nice to me, but just do the right thing for me. And that's it. You know, as long as I'm paying you to do something for me. Yeah. Reported to spend 28%. But be nice. Overall, be nice. Less time with a patient who was fat rather than one of their typical weight patients. And the final one that we all know and are very familiar with, physicians over attribute symptoms and problems to weight and don't refer the patient for any sort of diagnostic testing or suggest any treatment beyond advising the patient to lose weight. I don't know why that's like a big shocker. When you are overweight or especially obese, that's an issue. And most of the time, depending on what you're going in for, like for, say for instance, you went in for like back pain or joint pains or you had high blood pressure, all this other stuff, a lot of that stuff could be attributed to you being overweight or, or obese. And if a doctor 
has been a doctor for a very long time and they can see two plus two equals four. They don't need to like go into these extra things and do this, whatever the fuck. And this, I don't know where exactly they're from because here in America, if you go, hey, I want to run test. I want to do this. I want to do that. Most of the time, doctors here in America be like, dude, whatever the fuck you want to do, I literally don't care because I'm going to get the money from either you or the insurance. So it doesn't fucking matter. But if you live in Canada, sure, maybe they don't want to do it because in Canada, you can't. It's all subsidized. You can't just go, I want I want to get blood work. I want to do this. I want to do that, whatever. You can't just do shit like that. You have to actually, because it's one of the benefits of having privatized or semi-privatized healthcare here in America is that you sometimes will be able to or a lot of times you'll be able to get the, the procedures and things like that that necessarily are not things that you need, but things that you want, if that makes any sense. So if you're in America and you go, I want to get like diagnostic tests, I want to get blood work, I want to get this and this and this, most of the time doctors will be like, yep, whatever, dude. And I've done that plenty of times. I went to my doctor recently and I was like, dude, I want to get my blood work done. I want to get my urine tested. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to do that. And the doctor was like, whatever, dude, all of it. Yep, let's get it all done. And the next three weeks, we can get it all done, whatever you want to do. And he had no issue with that. And he was telling me, he's like, bro, you're young, you have no issues, but if you want to get this done, no problem. And that's what I feel like a lot of times these people are not like talking or they're not getting into the nitty gritty of when you're fat. A lot of these issues are attributed to you being fat. Having problems while obese is not some kind of like nuance or niche thing. It's happening a lot. Okay. Anyway. And this is a really good example. Patients with shortness of breath were more likely to receive lifestyle change recommendations yeah. if they were overweight. 50 yeah, that fucking makes sense. A fucking duh. A fucking duh. Of course. What kind of study is this? Like, oh yeah, people that were obese had a higher likelihood of getting a weight loss or lifestyle change prescription rather than a person that was normal weight. Be I wonder why. I wonder why somebody that is not obese is getting a prescription of not weight loss compared to the person that is overweight or obese getting a prescription of weight loss. Huh. Oh, I, want, I wonder why that's happening. I really wonder how, how could that happen? Wow. Who would have known when you're fat, you, you, that's an issue. And then when you're not fat, you don't have the issue of being fat. Who would have fucking known? <laughs> I wouldn't have known. I can't believe it. So this is dumb. This is dumb. This automatically should just tell me something right here. That's like somebody going like, oh, teen pregnancy drops off at 25. Like, it's obvious. Fucking dog, 25 years old. Jesus fucking Christ. I hope so. Teen pregnancy is the same shit. It's so obvious. Why does this even need to be stated at all? 4% versus 13% and more likely to receive medication to manage symptoms if they were a normal weight. Yes, because when you're a normal weight and you're having issues with breath control, that probably the weight is not going to be an issue because it's not an issue because you don't have extra weight. That's going to be the, okay. All right. Uh, fuck it. There's also this study <laughs> that has a really horrific statistic. Fat shaming in the doctor's office can be mentally and physically harmful. This is from 2017. In one study of over 300 autopsy reports, obese patients were 1.65 times more likely than others to have significant undiagnosed medical conditions. Yeah, but you literally just said the reason why you guys don't go to the doctor is because you're afraid that the doctor is going to tell you that being fat is a problem. So what is this? What is this Ouroboros, dude? You're literally telling me that you don't, okay, you starting point, okay, circle. You're telling me you start here and you go, I am fat. And anytime I go to the doctors, the doctors tell me that fatness is a problem, but I don't want to hear that fatness is a problem. Therefore, I don't go to the doctors and then you die and then you get the autopsy. And then it turns out that you had issues attributed to being fat. And then what? Like, what am I supposed to do? What, what do you want me to do? You didn't go to the doctor. Why is it my fault? Why is it my fault that you didn't go to the doctor? I'm not, I don't, I, I don't own you. You're your own person. Why do you feel like people are, okay. All right, dude. All right. I.e. endocarditis, ischemic bowel disease, or lung carcinoma, which means that they were probably misdiagnosed or did not have equal access to healthcare. And that is only based off of autopsies. Okay. So you can imagine the people who are still living and misdiagnosed. Look, I, I'm not saying that there isn't problems in the healthcare industry. I'm not, I'm not saying there isn't. Obviously there is. Probably many problems, right? But I think the main takeaway of this whole video that she's claiming is take care of yourself first and foremost. And sometimes you're going to have to deal with things 
that are things that you don't want to deal with. And that sucks a lot of dicks. It sucks a big BBC sandwich right in your mouth. It's not good. But wouldn't it be better to suck on a miniature, a BBC Junior right now, take that semen in your mouth and understand what your problems are now, rather than later on having the ginormous BB sizzle right in your throat, gargling, swallowing that shit down your mouth. Wouldn't it be better to get the problem solved now as opposed to later when it actually becomes a bigger issue? I get it. Nobody wants to go anywhere and somebody tell them something bad about themselves. But at least you have the information. At least you're more knowledgeable about whatever problem that you're having. And at least you even know you have a problem at all to begin with. Instead, you're complaining, you're complaining, you're complaining. And ultimately, this can all just be solved by like one of two things. Lose some weight, okay? That would like benefit you tremendously. Being fat is not a good thing and it's only up to you to do that. Given that I don't think you're disabled, okay? Now, there are some disabled people that can't lose weight. Okay, fine. But like 99.9% .9 of people and even a lot of disabled people can lose weight, okay? And I'm sick of people saying that there's impossibilities or it's just not feasible and there's more problems than good to losing weight. What the fuck do you want? You're literally dealing with problems every single day. Or you're just going to complain endlessly about the problems that you have while being obese and then never doing anything about it, which is basically the same thing. The number is probably insane. With the rise of weight loss drugs and weight loss surgery and this perception that they are so accessible. These people, man, this is so fucking, this is so cringe. No, keep doing them. My FYP slash Insta are all my old fave plus size influencers who are now having gastric sleeves. I, I, I just... When I see people that say things like this and they go, I had a fan base. I had these, all these influencers, all these people that I really loved watching because they were suffering in a tremendous way. And I was kind of suffering in that same way. And I felt like we had some kind of connection there. So I decided to follow them instead, you know, they, and then they decided to improve their lives from getting the gastric sleeve or going on Ozempic or whatever other peptide they're on in order to lose weight, right? Diabetic medicine, whatever. Instead of these people suffering day in, day out, they're doing something to improve their health in a positive direction and you don't like that because, <laughs> because you deem that as like a, you know, they're, 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 they're basically turning their back on the plus size community. Yeah, turn your back on it. Turn your whole back on it. All of it. Let them see the butt cheeks, the beautifully chiseled butt cheeks because you've been going to the gym. You've been working out. Oh, you looking real good from the back and the front. Oh, especially the front. The front looks really good. Those calf muscles are really shapely and beautiful and imbued with good looking muscle fibers and juiced up from the water you've been drinking recently. Fuck them. What does it matter? Again, I don't know what's up with these people that are like purpose, purposely outing themselves as like intolerant, infeasible arguments of I don't like these people anymore because they decided to better themselves. Dude, stop. Stop it. Which they're not. First of all, they're not accessible. And it depends on what you mean by accessible. I would always say that if you want to go on a Zempic or a peptide of that particular variety or you wanted to get gastric surgery, I would always recommend somebody to not do those things until they have done the other things first, right? Doing it organically, I feel like is probably the best move since you're going to do irreversible changes to your body if you do the other things, right? And I've seen tons of people complaining about Ozempic and I've seen a lot of people complain about gastric sleeves and other gastric surgeries and things such and so forth, bari bariatric surgery, sorry. So I would always recommend if you can, then do it the organic way, diet and exercise, best two ways of doing it. But if you can't, don't feel like you're a bad person or you're a shit person. It's all right. You're good. But I would always recommend doing it organically. And also, I think it's like really crazy for these people to also say that once you get these surgeries done, it's like an easy cheat way to getting to the finish line, which is bullshit, by the way. It's not. Just because you get a, a, a bariatric surgery or you're going to Zempic or other peptides that are related to those things, that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that it's just like taking you to the finish line. You still have to come. You still have to abide by the rules of thermodynamics. Okay. Those particular things are going to make it easier for you, but it's ignorant to assume that it's going to get you to the end. There are so many people anecdotally and statistically that get these surgeries that still are very, very obese. Now, granted, a lot of them are not as obese as they once were. Like for instance, if you look at Boogie2988, right? YouTuber on this platform, he got the gastric sleeve, right? And he is still 400 plus pounds. He was like 600 when he got it. So he did do a lot of weight, which is great. 
but he still eats like shit. The man is maintaining 400 pounds. Now, granted, 400 is way better than 600, but 400 pounds is not good at all. And he'll even tell you that he doesn't suspect to make it past 55, which is crazy, by the way. I don't even know who the fuck you are on this planet where you know you can do something about your health and you're just not doing anything about it. And you're just like totally okay with eating like Philly cheesesteaks and extra large donuts, whatever. But the point I'm making is, it's not going to get you to the finish line. It's just going to get you a little bit of a head start, which is fine, which is okay. If that's what you need. That's what you need, dude. And don't shit on people that are doing that. How, how ethical is accessibility is up for scrutiny, right? But, but bigger picture, they are seen as accessible. And so where before this latest fad, there wasn't, that un there wasn't a quick fix. So people, even though people obviously villainized and demonized fat people for not putting in the effort or not having the willpower, people recognize that it does take effort and willpower to lose weight. But now you have weight loss surgery and now you have weight loss drugs, that effort has been taken away. Because That's not true, dude. It's, oh, it's such, oh, it's such bullshit. How can you say something so incredibly wrong, so passionately, so confidently, and nothing you just said made any sense at all? Like I just said, you taking weight loss medication or you getting bariatric surgery is not going to get you to the finish line. If there was a whole bar, okay, zero to 100% and you get the weight loss surgery and suddenly you're at 100%, that's not how that works. You still have to put in a ton of work in order to get to that finish line and reach your goals. A lot of work. You have to do diet. You have to do exercise. It's not as simple as just getting surgery or taking these particular types of peptides to get to the end. That's like somebody going... Mr. Olympias do no work because they take drugs in order to become Mr. Olympias. Are you stupid? Just because a guy is taking drugs doesn't mean he's not spending hours of time in the gym, hours of his life eating, understanding nutrition, doing tons and tons of reps, doing the work to get to the end point. You understand? What you're, what you're basically saying is you're excusing you're basically forgiving all these drugs and you're saying this, this is all you need to do in order to lose weight, which is not true. We have tons of evidence to prove that when somebody gets a surgery or takes these particular peptides, they're still fat for years, for years, fat, obese, all the time. It's not as simple as saying, take this and it's okay. No, it's not. That's ridiculous. Because in a lot of people's minds and how it is advertised and how it's perpetuated in the media, it is seen as a quick fix. This is the magic pill we've always wanted to lose weight. And if you, fat person, don't take that magic pill, then you're actively staying fat. And therefore, you should be even more demonized, even more vilified. If you have, okay, it's there are more options now than ever before to accentuate the weight loss and, and, and accelerate it, okay? Sure. But... Ultimately, it is always about diet and exercise. Those things are just going to make it a little bit easier for you to reach that end point. So this has always been true. If you're fat and there's always been a quote unquote quick fix, but I mean, it depends on what you mean by quick fix. These things are just basically enhancers. It's like taking a pre-workout, basically. They're just going to get you hyped up to do the things that you need to do ultimately, right? Give you a little bit more, I don't know, uh, motivation to get into the gym or diet and exercise and things like that. It's ultimately still about diet and exercise. So your statement here of like, if you don't take this pill, you're going to feel like you're doing something wrong. You should already feel like you're doing something wrong by being fat and having the ability to lose weight the organic way, which is ultimately the best way of doing that since it's the one that's going to give you the most long term and you're doing it under your own free will without the added, without the, the, uh, the added benefits of having those other things. You're doing that, Okay. And you're, you're literally saying that, that it's never been a thing? Dude, ever, it's always been like that. So you saying that doesn't even make sense. I believe, and you know, I'd love other people, potentially historians to come in and, quest and challenge us. Historians. But this feels like the biggest fight that plus size people have ever had. Fat people Stairs, stairs, definitely. Not, not this. People have ever had to advocate for their existence because we are being told there's an easy way out it's a it's just a bet it's just a faster way of doing it i understand what she's saying like she's saying like oh fat people should be able to exist and all this is doing is just making us feel worse about being fat dude it's always been like this like you being fat is not an anomaly you got that way because you ate too many calories and you're maintaining eating too many calories to be fat so when you say 
I feel bad or fat people feel bad. It's attack on fat people because people there's drugs now, or there's like particular surgeries to help you lose this weight and you're not doing it. That's dumb. That's dumb because you've always been able to lose weight. And even right now you're still able to lose weight so that all this is just extra. It's just more stuff on top of it. You understand? There was already like a big pile of reasons to lose weight. And all we did was just like throw on two more things out of the piles of millions of stuff. You understand? So that argument makes, makes no sense. You sh if that was the case, you should already feel bad re regardless of that. Because the weight, weight loss has always been an option for you. And if you don't take it, then there's something wrong with you. You obviously don't care about your health then. It's always been like that though. It's not about this new drug or whatever, miracle, whatever, dude. You have never, if you've never thought about doing that or like you just want to maintain being a fat person, you feel bad about being fat because of drugs, dude, that doesn't even make sense. Again, this has always been an option for you. You can lose weight organically. And right. And so with, with, um, the kind of plus size content creator engagement on this app with where plus size fashion is, which is in the fucking toilet. If you don't already, you need to follow Stephanie Yeboah. She posted a video a couple of days ago talking about plus size fashion and where it is. One of the best places I think for plus size fashion is at the moment is vintage. Okay. Vintage. Like, because it's the stuff that happened like, you know, five years ago, <laughs> three years ago. Right now we're, we're in the trash. Okay. And then obviously the rise of the weight loss um, procedures or, or, or treatments is on the rise. And I think that's not, that is not um, uncoincidental. They are completely correlated together. If I don't like when people think like this, dude. These like, these weird hypotheticals and these people that think that the world is operating in a particular type of way. The, the, the conspiracy theory people, make no mistake about it, this is some conspiracy theory shit. Oftentimes, it just, right place, right time type shit, dude. It's not something as serious as like, all the big companies are coming together, and because they came together, they came up with this grand plan to stop people from being fat, to keep people being thin, which ultimately doesn't even make any sense, since a lot of these companies probably want you to stay fat so they can continuously farm you for being fat, since you guys consume a lot of food, a lot of Uber Eats, a lot of DoorDash, you guys consume so much compared to people that are not fat, which is like a gym membership, a $10 gym membership at Planet Fitness, and maybe a quarter of the food that they usually spend on th that you that you probably spend. You understand? Like, I don't know why it's, it's too easy for these people to go into the conspiracy theories, and none of it ever makes sense if you even think about it for more than a couple seconds. Why would... <sighs> The fact that you think like this, it just shows me so much about the way that you you monitor the world, dude. If we keep going down this path and we see more plus size people, um, becoming healthier, and that doesn't you don't like that. Like you just you want to stay comfortable in your fat body, which is already uncomfortable in and of itself. But when you see other fat people being fat, and then you can conflate that with. Oh, but they're fat, so therefore they're doing it, and I could do it too, and they're comfortable, right? So, like, that makes me comfortable. It's like mind over matter or something like that. It's it's terrible. It's gross. I, you know, uh, taking on the surgery, taking on the drugs. And by the way, I just want to say, like, if I <laughs> do you do you. If that is what you want to do, please crack on. But it doesn't make any sense to literally be shitting on that, right? To sit there and go, like, these drugs, you feel bad for doing this, and it gets you through the end point. It does all this stuff. And then go... Yeah, but, you know, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You know, you can do whatever the fuck you want, whatever you want to do. That'd be like me going like, dude, dudes that suck dick are gay, okay? Like, dudes, that, if you're sucking dick, that's crazy. That's gay. I don't like it. But, uh, I mean, you could do whatever you want. I mean, I don't really care. I mean, I don't put dick in my mouth like you, like you being a gay boy. Uh, but uh, you can do whatever you want. Ultimately, I have no problem with people being gay, by the way. Um, but I hate gay people. That's what it's like. That, that That's what you're basically saying. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. Like, you, you just went through this entire video claiming that it's a bad thing for these drugs to exist. And then at the end of it, go like, but do whatever you want, I guess. All right. <laughs> Lovely autonomy is 100% a human right, and I will always advocate for cool. that. My concern, what I'm saying- Maybe you should talk to the other person that didn't understand that, dude. The other fucking girl right before this. In this video, my concern is that people are seeing it as the normal or the encouraged path for all fat people. I think it's an I think it's an interesting idea to say this is like the normality, given that you want it to be normal for fat people to exist when being fat is not a normality. Isn't that interesting how you think that you don't like this to be the normality, which is like people getting thinner, granted, through the intervention of medical medical, uh, and medical intervention. But you don't consider being thin, like getting to the end point of being thin as a normal thing. But you consider being fat as a normal thing. I think that's very interesting.
moving of nuance. And so if that becomes the normal way of thinking that like, well, why would you stay to choose fat? We can easily resolve True. it. Then that means plus size representation is going to be taken away. That means that brands are not going to um, invest in plus size options because, well, you shouldn't be fat anyway because you could easily just take the magic pill, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it, mm, I don't want to say it's bleak. I don't want to, I don't want to come across as too negative Sally Sue, but... I am concerned. I am so concerned for what the future is for like plus size representation. It's just an interesting thing to hear, man. I to sit here and make a whole video about how you feel like being plus size is being threatened and taking away all of the plus size clothing. Dude, what are you guys really even fighting for? Like, bro, you guys are literally complaining about things that are so cr incredibly crazy. Like not being able to fit on airplanes, not being able to take showers, not being able to do anything like this. And you're, you're complaining that there is more accessibility to become thin, which would better you in an overall positive direction in the sense of like now you have more accessibility options instead of complaining about the world being built for a particular person. Instead of like complaining about that stuff and arguing for you to be accompanied to having the world accompany you instead of you company accompanying the world. That's what, that's ultimately what this is all about. I get it. Like you want to be fat, which is fine if you want to be fat, but the reasons for why you want to be fat don't make any sense. They have no, they have no bearing in reality. And instead of taking accountability for yourself, you're complaining that people are doing that, which is taking accountability for themselves. And you don't want to do that. And then you're going to look at all the terrible, disgusting stuff that you consider are terrible, disgusting that other people may not do. It's just like, why would you ever think like this, dude? You know, you can't change the world, but you can change yourself to better suit the world. And I'm not saying things can't improve, obviously they can, but it's just so unreasonable to make these particular types of claims and have none of them be ever centered in reality. I, I'm just sick of these people saying the same shit. It doesn't make any sense. In fact, representation, if this snowball keeps snowballing, this way of thinking, that you could easily resolve your issue, but you're choosing not to there. It's always been like that. If you wanted to be fat, that's fine. There was a solution for you ultimately. Now, granted, it might not have been as easy as it is now in the sense of like you could take other pills or weight loss surgery that would expedite it. But ultimately, it's still hard and it's still something you have to do regardless of what you're doing, okay? You've always been able to lose weight. Why are you making this claim? It was never impossible for you to not lose weight. You saying that, making it seem like, oh, you're a bad person for not losing weight. It's always been an option for you. Why are you looking at weight loss as never been an option until now? You're like 34 years old. You are an adult. You could have lost weight at any point in time if you feel bad now for not losing weight What happened to like the last 10 15 years of your life? Why are you not fat? What why are you never looked at this before? Oh my god for you're a bad person that that logic is Scary, okay, and we're seeing it. We're seeing it because the algorithm is stifling plus size content creators Content we're seeing because plus size fashion is no longer being produced in the way it was or being invested in the way it was We're seeing it this is the real life consequence of that, of that logic, of that thinking. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty generous this morning, oh, so I really wanted to pose. Please go to the gym. I'm not being rude at all. I'm giving you genuine mental health advice. I spent years being 300 pounds and depressed. Yeah, splotch maker, she's going through some depression right now, dude. And apparently she's been going through depression for her whole life, which is terrible. I mean, that's awful. I. I mean, if it's a chronic thing, there's nothing you can do about it, sure. But oftentimes, I find when you have a very healthy body, usually that's reflected of the healthy mind as well. I don't know. I like to think that I'm a pretty healthy-minded person, dude. I'm. I think my ability to like bounce back from things is pretty good. But anyway, let's hear what Sponge Maker has to say. It was kind of more of a rhetorical, self-processing question, but how would it sit with you? in your immediate assumptions that it's related to weight or exercise, that I was struggling more emotionally in socio-emotional everything functioning, and I was more depressed and more anxious when I was thin and extremely active. That would tell me that what you were doing in order to make yourself extremely, I wanted to also focus on the wording that this woman used because it's very interesting, 
Okay, active, never thin, never in shape, never got to a good healthy weight. You want to specify that, active, which is good too. Being active is very good regardless of what weight you're at, right? Fine, splotch maker. I'm sure that when you were active, maybe you were more depressed at that particular point in time. But given the fact that you've never reached a thin status or you've never really put yourself in a place to where you could even reach those particular things, I just think it's such a crazy thing to say like, well, I felt like shit when I was when I was in the gym and I was doing stuff and I feel like I'm shit now. So, I mean, I guess I'll just stay where I'm at now because like, regardless, I'll just feel like shit. What are you, what are you doing? Like, is, is that just like a reason to never improve your life ever because you just feel like shit regardless of the circumstances that you're in? What kind of logic are these people running off of right now? You're literally giving yourself unlimited excuses to feel like garbage consistently because you think there's no other way to improve your life. What? How can you say these things? <sighs> Where do your biases come from? I, I also, I, I love the pause. The pause that she gives is h hilarious. Like she just said something with so much value behind it when actually what she just said was just her giving herself excuses to never lose weight. It's just beautiful. I want to just really focus in on that because she does this a lot where she thinks she says something really profound and then she'll just hit you with a, how does that make you feel? Pause for like 10 seconds. Look at the camera menacingly. When I was thin and extremely active, where do your biases come in? I don't know why you would consider me thinking that when you're not fat, not obese, and your body is of a natural size, okay, natural size, natural shape, and not having to worry about the problems that most definitely you're going to be under when you're obese. And those things are alleviated for the most part. I automatically would assume that you're not going to be as worried. You're not going to have to have that much depression, or maybe some depression would go away to, a, to a, a minimum degree, or at least if the depression doesn't go away, at least you don't have to deal with the other consequences of being fat. Like, why are you just stacking on problems? You understand? Like, you, if you even have this depressing, this depression sandwich that's always going to be there, what you're doing is like you're stacking on additional layers of sandwich and like tartar sauce and like extra terribleness on top of that sandwich. When what you could do is slide off the top, slide off the top of the sandwich and sure you'll have the depression sandwich, but at least you won't have all the other terribleness that's on top of the sandwich, if that makes any sense. And why did you jump to that kind of conclusion? about movement, about size. I think she's hyper-focused on things that, like it makes sense to find something like this to try to find your point to, because what this person should have said was, instead of going to the gym, it would have been okay to say that, going to the gym, I would have said, be more active and pursue a calorie deficit. That would have been, or healthy eating habits would have been way better to say here, but I'm not gonna sit here and shit on this person. The, the overall message of this is be uh, be healthier. That's the overall message. So instead, splotch maker, instead of taking like what this person actually means, they're gonna hyper-focus or hyper-fixate on this one thing, which is going to the gym and move more. And then she knows that she has a counter to that, which is, well, in my experience, I didn't feel good at all when I was moving my body. Okay, splotch maker, sure, you didn't feel good when you didn't move your body, but it's it's such a stupid thing to say, given the fact that you know what this person was saying. You know what this person was saying, dude. It's, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it when people want to go so specific on something to try to beat you over the head off of a point. If I say something like, women wear makeup and you hit me with well david you know guys wear makeup too i know i know guys wear makeup but for the most part women wear makeup right right so am i wrong no i'm not wrong why the fuck are you hyper focusing on something that is completely irrelevant to the point it doesn't make sense you just want to catch me on this really re really really weird like point in the question like where you focus on something maybe i said incorrect but it wasn't even really inc incorrect it was just something that was like slightly off. You understand? Like it's just bullshit, dude. And honestly speaking, you can't have conversations with these people because they're not gonna get to the real crux of the issue. They're gonna focus on something to argue with you about. So ultimately they can't they can't ever lose. It doesn't make sense. And like nobody's going to be 100 percent perfect on conversation points. You're gonna say something incorrect at some point, but it's like it's so incredibly disingenuous for that person to not give you the 
oh, I know what you were saying. Like, I understood what you were saying, or at least ask a question like, oh, did you mean this when you said that? Instead, you go, okay, but you're wrong on this because you said this in the incorrect way, and obviously I felt this way about that, and you didn't, you don't know anything about that. Like, what are you fucking talking about, dude? What am I, the general point I'm saying is like, you should be healthier, you should move your body more, and you should feel like your digestion, the way that you consume food and calories should be adjusted to better suit a lifestyle of more activity. Instead of going, well, I, I used to be really like active and I didn't feel good at all. Okay, splotch maker. How does it sit with you that my experience is not what you experienced? It's, it's dumb. It's, uh, what you just said is stupid, dude. Everybody's, it's such a, cra it's just, it just, it doesn't make sense. Everybody's experience is not what everybody experiences. Sure, you might be able to relate on certain things, but like, what is even, what is even this point? Like, yes. Okay, Splotch Maker. Oh, you really got me. You experienced something that I didn't experience. Oh, yes, you got me. How does it sit with you that possibly your experience has been informed by the cultural anti-fatness and body hierarchies we have how does it feel knowing that your your stance is being informed by the cultural norms of fat acceptance and everything to deal with that do you see how easy it is to flip whatever the fuck you said on on back on you and the unhealthy relationship that a lot of people have with movement you have no you have no relationship with movement and you're critiquing somebody that is saying that it's better to have a relationship with movement than not have a relationship with movement. Your argument doesn't make sense. The way that people revolve it around numbers instead of healthy relationship with movement. What you're, what you're doing right now is like you're focusing on somebody that goes to the gym and focuses on getting the number up, right? Like going to the gym and adding extra weight to the bench or I don't know, deadlifting more weight every single time or something like that. You can say those people have an unhealthy relationship with the gym. Sure, you could say that. I wouldn't say that. I would say these people are focused on something that maybe you're not focused on in the same way that maybe I like playing Yu-Gi-Oh and you don't like playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm sure you can consider that to be an unhealthy thing. But most people that are going to the gym are not doing that, okay? And I'm again, it's like, why are you focusing on a very, very small niche portion of society that has issues like this? Or like, why wouldn't you just go for the general understanding of when people go to the gym, which is most of the time to get in shape, lose weight, and be muscular. That's it. That's like the the general thing. If you want to hyper focus on somebody that's like chasing numbers and going up higher and higher and higher, you could do that, but it's disingenuous to focus on that because you're talking about the general speaking point of somebody that's obese, okay? And you're comparing it to a very very niche topic of somebody that goes to the gym to like really really like fucking push themselves, you know? Like somebody most people are not doing that. Most people are just trying to get healthier. They're just trying to be living a healthy, a happy, healthy lifestyle. Anyway, Splotch Maker, continue. Revolve it around numbers instead of healthy relationship with movement. What is a healthy relationship with movement? Instead of joyful movement. What is joyful movement? Like there are going to be points in your life where you're going to have to do something that's not going to be joyful. And most of the time, it's like a lot of times it might be when you go to the gym. Okay. I don't like doing abs. I don't. But I know that I have to do them because it increases my ab strength and makes me have more abs or whatever. Same thing with like leg press. I don't like doing it. I don't like squatting, but I'm going to do it because I know it's going to benefit me in a tremendous way. As with anything in life, dude, there are plenty of times that I'm going to do something because I don't want to do it. Right. And that's because if I don't do it, nobody's going to do it. So I have to be ultimately the one that steps up and does it because if I don't, nothing's going to happen. So instead of pursuing joyful things, I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy shit. I think it's probably better to understand that there are going to be things that you don't want to do, but you're going to have to do. And if you do those things, you might feel better as a result of those things that you didn't want to do. You understand? I don't understand this like joyful movement things. If you're going to the gym and all you're doing is things that you want to do, what are you talking about? Like, what do you enjoy doing at the gym? I don't know. I like curling biceps. So that means like all I'm going to do is just curl biceps every single fucking time. Fuck no. You have to do other shit, dude. You don't get every time you go to the gym, you're going to have to do something different, right? You have a schedule. You have to do stuff that you don't like every once in a while. It's okay. It's all right. Because guess what? You're feeling better. You're looking better. You have a more muscled up physique. Okay, anyway, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm arguing with this. Instead of helpful movement. What is helpful movement? Where does the line of thinking follow? What are these talking points? Joyful movement? Helpful movement? What is Where's this? Where's the trail? It goes down. Healthiness? When you sit with the fact that I've been thin 
and depressed. Okay. Fat and depressed. Terrible. Thin and anxious. Fat and anxious. Both being super active, being less active, being medium active, doing home exercises, going to the gym. It must be really easy to live in a world like this and have this mentality of just, I don't have to do anything because no matter what I do, I'm just going to be depressed. I'm just going to be terrible. It doesn't matter. Like my life's going to suck perpetually regardless of what I do. So I might as well just never do anything ever, ever again, because fuck it. I'm going to be depressed regardless of that. I don't want to be your friend. That's a very terrible disgusting person to be around dude i'm sure that you have your vices i'm not saying that you shouldn't have friends i'm not saying the splotch maker is a bad person but i know that i'm not trying to be around negativity like that i know a lot of people are not trying to be around negativity like that hopefully you're around somebody that goes i have a problem and you go and they go how do i help my, how do i like address my problems because you've been complaining about this for like I, since i've known this girl which is like a year you've been complaining about this for at least a year probably more than that and you've done nothing Nothing. And your solution to this problem every single time is either one of two things. Society or I can't do anything about it because I'm going to feel bad regardless. Dude, well, then what? Then what? Then what do you do? You just sit there perpetually unhealthy, depressed, and just hating hating yourself. It's just not good. It's not good. How does that sit? Where do you go from there when you can't blame your body? It's not about blaming your body. It's about, oh my god. It's not about blaming your body. It's about becoming healthier. It's not saying that your body is bad. It's just saying it could be better. It's just saying that you could be healthier. It's just saying that there are things about yourself that can be improved and that's okay. That's all we're saying. Why are you making it more complicated than it actually is? Why are you doing this? Oh. Where do you go from there when you can't blame it on its size? On its movement? What the fuck are you talking about? I'm just, what comes up, you know? Hint, hint, there are more systemic oh. things at play. There are relational things at play. Oh. Like I mentioned, if you listened, grief, oh. grad school, oh. state of the world. Oh. Like these are things that are not going to be changed. Oh, you can't do nothing. There's nothing you could do to help yourself at all. You can't do anything, huh? How can you live in a world where, like, you're just blaming all your problems on everything but yourself? How is it this easy for you? How can you do that? Oh, damn. Damn. Do you have any friends at all? This is just gross, man. Oh, damn, man. Oh. Ugh. Whatsoever. Bye. Whether or not. I am 300 pounds and depressed. It's not going to change based on my weight, oh. based on other things. Somebody please, like, down below, tell me, tell me, please tell me what you think about this, dude. I can't be alone in this, right? This, There's no way. This is not a normal human being thought process, dude. All I'm hearing is... I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's not my fault, it's not my fault, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. It's just too easy for this woman to just never take accountability, dude. I'm just upset. I, I, somebody's got it. Please, am I wrong? Can somebody, you please tell me down below? I'm, somebody please help me out. Help me out. You know? No. And there's a way to say, hey, have you tried maybe movement and exercises and endorphins and all that? But there's a really strong tie in in this comment with weight. Um, <sighs> And I'd really check in with where that comes from oh. and why. <laughs> why you project this so hard, dude? Why are you hitting this dude with, oh, maybe you should look at the way you think of the world because I'm obviously not, I'm not incorrect at all. It's all on you. It's not on me. It's your fault. What kind of projection is this, splotch maker? Even when I gave you a lot of systemic and relational. It's too easy to blame it on systemic issues. Like if, if I tell you, hey, your life would be improved immeasurably if you lost weight and your response is, well, that may be true. Like, I might have a healthier lifestyle, but it wouldn't get over the fact that fat people are being oppressed every single day by the healthcare system, society in general, not being able to get a job because I'm so fat that I can't stand up for eight hours a day, and that's discrimination. And then also I have to buy... I have to buy fat tack stuff because the necklace that I'm wearing is too small. So I have to buy necklace extenders to put that around my neck because otherwise I'm being charged more money for existing while being fat. It's just too easy to never look at anything that to do to help you instead just blaming everything on somebody else. You can, are you incapable of taking responsibility? 
reasons why you still oh. saw a fat person. Reasons why you still saw a fat person who was depressed. And this was your instinct to come at this. The audacity for you to come on a public platform and make a video like this. I really don't know what's worse, you understanding the implications of this statement or you not understanding and being put in a position to make patients feel ashamed. I, I hate when people do this like moral hierarchy thing where they think that because they feel more than you, therefore you should feel bad. Like when somebody hits you with the how dare you or if they hit you with the, the, or, the audacity that you thought you could, at that point I'm just like, Dude, if you're not attacking the points I made and instead you're attacking that maybe I'm like morally morally lesser than you, I don't care. I don't give a fuck that you think that you feel more than me. That doesn't apply. I don't know why so many people think this is a point to one. Like you can all day tell me that I'm a bad person because I, 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 I said what I said. But ultimately, you're not doing anything besides just telling me you feel more than me. Which ultimately might not even be true because you're just saying something that anybody could say. Attack the point. That's all it is. Attack the point. Don't sit there and go, the audacity of this person saying whatever they said. I don't care. Don't care. Don't care. And I, I don't know why. And I know you wouldn't care either. This is just some bullshit ass point to try to get your point across, which really don't even have a point. First, you understanding the implications of this statement or you not understanding and being put in a position to make patients feel ashamed of how they look in your presence. I want to also point out too, making a video like this and then like saying that this other person is like morally inferior or that they have like less feelings because they made a video like that is so incredibly dumb given the fact that this person is making a video in the same breath responding to a person making this video so like aren't you doing the exact thing that that other person is doing couldn't that person also say the same thing about you since your point is literally that they're morally inferior to you which is not even really even a point at all that's like somebody just saying that i love dogs more than you therefore you're a bad person like it's what are you what are you even talking about right now this point is so incredibly dumb i don't even understand what the fuck you're even saying right now are you upset why are you upset this hard why a attack the point please in a position to make patients feel ashamed of how they look in your presence the strength it takes plus size people to go into a doctor's office or a hospital <laughs> setting and ask for help in regards to their health and then for you to come on this app and create and allow a space for us to feel more ashamed of ourselves and more fearful you're an adult right you're a grown-up you're a grown individual right I don't know why you're, is this, why is this such a big deal to you? And then also, you're not even really making a claim. You're just saying, I want to feel good and you're not making me feel good. So you should feel ashamed of yourself. Even though that I'm doing the exact thing that you're doing by shaming you, I think that I'm morally superior to you, even though you could literally make the exact same video saying that I am, you, you are morally superior to me. Your point is dumb. It makes no sense and i'm so i am so incredibly sick of people making these claims dude i don't care i honestly i have no idea why you think that you like you 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 feeling better should be like on the agenda why does it i don't even know you why the what kind of task is it <laughs> what kind of task is it for me to any time when i put out or do anything on the internet or even in general in life that i should be considering you or maybe even someone else on how I'm gonna do that thing. Do you know how how unrealistic it is that I have to think about how you're gonna feel or how somebody else might feel and those two things may never correlate, meaning that I could appease you but I could ap I could not appease somebody else. And then what? I'm, just, I'm wrong regardless. So I might as well just do whatever I wanna do and whoever gets affected by that, it is what it is. As long as I'm doing right by me and I'm abiding by the rules and the facts and all this other stuff, I don't care how you feel. Why is this such a big talking point for you? It should not matter how you feel as long as that person is saying something correct. You understand? All right, man. Whatever, bro. Whatever, dude. Of being in your presence, selves, and more fearful of being in your presence? Don't you want us to be healthy? Don't you care about our health? You're dumb. You're just dumb. What? What is this? Like throwing... like. You want us to be healthy? Because you're not. You're not making me healthy. You're actually making me feel unhealthy. So I'm never going to go to the doctor. Dude, you're a grown woman. You're a grown woman. <laughs>
I, you're a grown woman. And you're literally saying that this person is making you not go to the doctor. Dude, if you, if you are on the internet and this makes you so upset that you're telling this person that you don't feel like you should be able to go to the doctor anymore, don't go on the internet. You, you don't have the ability to survive on the internet. I honestly believe that I, it's probably, it's probably inconceivable for you to even go outside given the fact that people might say something bad to you out there too. You should not be on the internet if this is the way you're going to act. It's not, not normal. Not normal at all. You need to take accountability for yourself. I'm, that's all. That's it. That's it. Can't handle the Stay out the kitchen. That's really what it comes down this? to. Don't you want us to be healthy? Don't you <laughs> care about our health? Oh, it's a joke. Oh, okay. It's a joke. Yes, it's a joke. It's a joke when our health is disregarded. You're. It's just dumb. Like, am I not? So you can't joke anymore? I can't say anything about anyone ever because I might or might not offend someone. You understand how stupid that logic is i can't do anything without offending somebody regardless of what i do so i might as well just do what i want you are so unbelievable your point makes zero sense because it can apply to you in the direct opposite way you have no grounds to talk here if your point is literally just you're making me feel bad i don't care joke oh okay it's a joke it's a joke when our health is disregarded yes in place of us being fat yes Oh, it's a joke? Yes. When we want and are seeking assistance with our weight? No, the video was a joke. That's that's the thing. It's not not that. The the video itself was a joke. You just you just can't recognize that. Like I don't know, you're just like incapable of it. Instead, you're just feigning ignorance and then you're also like super 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 like gaslighting people into believing that's what that person said when that's not what they said at all. I think all right, you know. Hey man, cool. Is that must be a great life where you can come up with your own arguments to argue against. Oh. You don't take us seriously because we're lazy to you. Oh man, and projecting like crazy. <laughs> what? You're projecting like crazy right now. What? Who said that? Where you get that from, huh? Where you get that from? Where did that come from at all? I don't remember that at all. I didn't hear that at all. Since with our weight, you don't take us seriously because we're lazy to you. And we're unhealthy to you. For you to get on this app yeah. and make current, future, and past patients uh -huh. feel ashamed of their bodies in front of people who are supposed to be helping them in the most vulnerable setting is disgusting. Oh, keep telling me. Keep telling me how disgusting I am. Oh, it's us oh, marinating over me. Oh, I'm so disgusting. Ooh, look at all the disgustingness. Oh, my God. Right? Disgusting. You're disgusting. I'm disgusting. Oof. And it feels good. This woman just can't handle criticism. I don't know what else to say. This woman is like a, a child thinking that everybody owes them something. I don't know you. And this person probably doesn't know you either. And to think that that person is going to change up their entire ideology or the way they should be actively navigating the realm of, of the internet because you got offended is ridiculous. It doesn't make sense because they can say the same thing for you. Get thicker skin. It's easier for you to get thicker skin for them to change up all the things that they do. And then the internet at large. And then you can say as much as you want, how dare you to make it seem like that person's worse than you. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. You're like one of those like you're like one of those late night talk show hosts when something bad happens and they start crying and they cry into you like, oh, I can't believe this happened. If you think otherwise, you're just a bad person. I don't care that you're crying, dude. It's not going to win an argument that you feel more than me. I don't give a fuck. It doesn't make sense. Okay. If your argument is literally, I'm for, I'm crying. I feel more than you. Therefore, you should feel bad or you, you should feel like you're wrong. I don't. That doesn't make any sense. That'd be like there was a war. Okay. And then you just stand out in the front lines. And you're just like, I can't believe that you would shoot at all the people that are on my side. You should feel so bad. What do you think is going to happen? You think the guys on the other side be like, you know, oh, you're right. What am I doing? Oh, wow. I can't believe you really just changed my mind. You really changed my mind. I can't believe I've been thinking. I can't believe that my government told me that I had to do this. But you're right. You know, you're right. Even though it goes against fundamentally all the things that I've been taught and how I think. <sighs> you know what? Let's hug. Let's hug pizza party, pizza party. No, they're gonna, guns are gonna be blazing, dude. What are you fucking talking about? You're not changing anybody. I don't care how, I don't care how powerful your feelings are. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Regardless here, we're gonna end the video here, okay? If you um, enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe. 
sharing the video, all those things. I'd appreciate it tremendously. I have memberships now, so if you want to become a member of my channel, you can. And also, I want to thank everybody that's currently a member. I love every single one of you, you beautiful specimens of human beings. You're all amazing. Thank you for the support. And thank you for everybody that's also uh, watching and subscribing and all that other stuff, dude. It's awesome. Thank you so much, you beautiful, amazing specimens of human beings. I really appreciate you. If you watch the video in its entirety, and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in feelings because your feelings really matter more than anybody's. You know that? Like, forget about having factual, logical statements. Feelings. Feelings first. And I feel, I'm feeling kind of hot right now. I'm feeling kind of toasty looking at how gorgeous you look. Oh, man, you kind of, oh, you know, I'm wearing Levi's right now, right? But you giving me a little rise in my Levi's by the way I'm looking at you. All that bone structure you got. All that beautiful, delicate, just absolutely atrociously beautiful skin. The texture of your body is outrageous. The way that your mind works is beautiful. The way that your hair accentuates the natural shape of your face is absolutely gorgeous and I love your kneecaps I think that they need to be appreciated every single day and I think that it's a sin that we don't it's blasphemous it's blasphemous not to have a holiday celebrating the kneecaps upon your body because they're beautiful and not even just the kneecaps but the mental image of your kneecaps like the astral planes of your kneecaps should also be appreciated however we're gonna do that but anyway guys we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social medias and second channel, they'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and I guess X, whatever you want to call it, Twitter X or my Discord. We do stuff on Discord and stuff like that. I do live streams, so you can send me links on Discord. We'll watch them on live stream. Hopefully, they're not porn and other stuff like that. And also, you're a beautiful, amazing person. Thank you for watching the video. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.